everybody, it's Eugene Lee Show here and welcome to Click3D. This is the program where we talk about 3D technologies like photogrammetry, laser scanning, hand scanning, and software, all kinds of different things. Today, what I'm going to do is show you how you can create a virtual tour from 3D scanning, uh, 3D scanning data. So I'm going to be using Faro Scene, their software, and it has a little plugin called Scene to Go, and that will allow you to create a virtual tour. Now, if we're talking about forensics and um, in general, you know, what kinds of things you can produce from 3D scan data, of course, you can create like animations, you can do things like, um, you know, point cloud data and kind of doing renderings and things like that. But one really cool output that you can do is this virtual tour. And the really great part about it is that you can append or you can annotate things. So you can attach crime scene photographs, video, PDFs, reports, Word documents, all kinds of different things. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to quickly go through the basic process of regist registering some scan data in Faro Scene. And then what I'm going to do is annotate by adding some photos and then producing the virtual tour. So let's get started on that. Okay, so I'm in Faro Scene here. And before I get started, I need to make sure that I have A, the scans that I want to process and B, all of the photographs that I want to. So what I'm going to do is I just took uh, some scans of the parking lot that was out in front here. And if I back up a bit, uh, you'll see that I also have some, oops, I have some photographs here. There we go. And so I've got some uh, of a sign here and then I've got a vehicle, I've got the tire and I also have this sewer here. So nothing, uh, nothing too crazy here, but you can see I've got um, sort of like a wide shot and then like a mid and then a close up for each of these. So um, enough photos there to uh, get the point across. So let me move this over and I need to go back to my uh, scan files. So I'm going to get the scan files and as you saw before, they were right here. So first thing is I need to create a project. So I'm going to do that. And what I'm going to do is choose a location for that. So I'm just going to put it on my desktop for this project and uh, I'll select that folder. And then from here, I'm just going to call this the P lot. Okay. For the parking lot. And I'm going to go ahead and create. Now you'll see, I have an empty project. There's not a lot of information here. There's zero scans. So I want to import uh, these scans into uh, Faro uh, scene here. So I can do it just by dragging and drop it even right here, but just to make it consistent, I'm just going to go to the import tab. Here's where you can just drag and drop files. It, it'll actually work in any window, but I'm just going to do that. I'm going to drag and drop them here. And once I do that, it says it's successfully imported six files. So I'm going to say great. Now, one thing to note here, um, these are just placeholders right now. So uh, the data hasn't been loaded from the scans or anything like that. You can see I have this broken circle. It's actually a, a broken point cloud, but basically it means that these are unprocessed scans. So um, scene hasn't done anything with these. And it's important because if I was working from an SD card and I dragged and dropped from an SD card from the scanner uh, into here, but then I pulled the SD card out of my computer. Well, these files or these placeholders are still pointing back to the SD card. So if I try to process right now, I'm going to get an error because um, I would have pulled the SD card. However, in this case, these files are actually on my um, computer. Okay, so uh, I haven't pulled anything and they're still located in the correct location. So that's perfect. Next, let's go to the processing tab and we're going to be able to do everything that we need to do. So I'm going to hit the process scans button here. Now I want to process all of these at once. So I'm just going to highlight the scans folder and move forward from there. Okay. Now I'm not going to go through all of these things, uh, but basically um, skip fully processed scans. These are all new scans. So there's nothing that's fully processed. Create scan point clouds that converts it to a format that's easier to visualize in 3D. I'm going to colorize the scans because this does in fact have color. I'm not going to put any filters. I'm not going to choose any targets, but what I am going to do is tell it to automatically process using top view and cloud to cloud. So this is a target less registration. So there's no targets. It's going to use the actual geometry of the, the building and the parking lot and the, the concrete, you know, barrier and, and whatever is in the point cloud to put this together, which is absolutely fine for what we're doing today. And I'm going to just stick with the default so we don't get, uh, uh, too long on this video. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to hit start processing. This is going to take just a few minutes and I'm going to pause and then I'll come back when this is done. 
Okay, so if we look at what we've got here, you can see it's got uh, seven things were processed, uh, even though there's only six scans, uh, it pre-processes as an extra, it considers it an object, but it's just a process. Um, successfully saved, then it registers, and then it saves again. Now here, um, sometimes people will just go, hey, look, it, it's all good, and you hit OK. But you should always look at the registration results. So I'm going to do that. And uh, here in the center here, this gives you a hint as to kind of a, a suggestion, and it says you should verify the registration. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go ahead and go start the uh, verification. And if I look at this and I zoom in, what it does is I can see the sequence of the scans they look all proper and if I look at like corners and things like that um, you can see it looks really really crisp here that looks good so I think visually you know just from looking at this it looks quite good it, do it doesn't look uh, like there's any issues here so that's one thing you should always do visually and I you know um, if I this was a more serious project I would actually look at this in, in greater detail but just remember to visually inspect the scans and the second thing is look at your report now here it shows 2.3 millimeters and 5.3 for the maximum. So here what this is telling me is that there are two scans that uh, came together and uh, there is uh, uh, like a mean, um, I shouldn't say the mean, but for example, the points that were checked between them uh, is giving a slightly larger area, uh, error. And typically this can often be because two scans are far apart from one another. So this is 62.3% overlap. So if I want to check that, I can go down here. This gives the errors between the scans. And you'll see that here, the scan 008 and scan 12 came together. They have the lowest overlap and they have the highest error, which kind of makes sense. Now there's some things you can do to tweak this a little bit, but um, this is perfectly acceptable for what we're doing. So no problem there. So basically the 3D view, the report looks good. I'm just going to say all the scans are registered. Yes. And I'm going to go ahead and finish. Now, finally, this is a new feature in uh, uh, one of the more recent versions of Pharaoh scene, but what it does is you can align the projects. You can actually, uh, you can see how the parking lot is sort of off at an angle in my screen. Well, I can tell it one axis is the X axis or something like that. Now I'm not going to do that for this one. I'm just going to go return to the registration dashboard and go from here. So next, what I'm going to be doing is going to the explore tab. And normally what happens when you go in here, uh, the 3D project will just uh, pop open here. So you can see this is all the uh, the data that I've been co uh, collecting here. Obviously some cars have driven by or whatever, um, but no big deal. And I can see I've got my scans here. One, two, three, four, five, and so forth. So that looks okay, but I'm not really interested in the 3D data right now. What I am interested in is appending the photographs to the points let's say and i'm going to do that in what's called the planar view and that's where you can sort of unwrap the view from each of these individual scans so the first thing i'm going to do here is i am going to look at my photos let me bring those up here and i'll show them to you here but basically here you go i've got like a number of photos that i can add so for example there's this sewer uh, there's a wide, mid, and then close up. I've got the vehicle, and then I've got this parking uh, parking sign that's over here. So let me start from the sewer, and then I'll do the vehicle, and then I'll do this parking sign. And it's really uh, kind of the same thing. It's more, you know, more of the same thing. But let me start from there. And first thing is first, I need to find. Let me just get this out of the way. Uh, my screens are doing some funny things because I'm recording here. So actually, you know what? Let me bring scene back up. And let me bring this screen up and let me, I'm actually going to close that because it's doing something funny here. Yeah, it won't let me drag it. So excuse, just hold on here. I'm going to do this again. And there we go. Oh, it's still doing something funny. Okay, finally got this thing sorted out here. My screen went funny because of the screen recorder. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the sewer. And the sewer is actually right over here in this area. And if I look, I have a scan position right over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click and I'm going to go open the planar view. And so when I open that, I should be able to see the sewer right there. So this is how we're going to do the um, adding of the images. Basically, I'm going to go annotation there's a button right up here okay and this button is what you're going to use and you can click anywhere wherever there's point cloud data and basically let's say i click over here it actually gives you the xyz position and i'm going to go to this general tab and i'm going to call this the sewer and i'm going to go back and i can give it a description so i can say uh you know parking lot sewer uh, or whatever you want something like that 
And then down here where there are hyperlinks, I can go to this dot 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 or whatever. And basically I need to go back and pick off uh, where this is. So let me just get that here up on the side and bring those photos back. Here we go. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to start with the wide shot here. I'll do that one first. Okay, like that. Yeah, that looks good. And if I go back here, let me open that one first. So I'll take the wide one, open that one, and then it brings it up here. I'm going to add this now. So it needs to be, these hyperlinks need to be added here like that. So that's the first one. And then I'm going to add the next one. So that's going to be the closer one. So let's say this one here is closer. So open, open that one. I'm going to add it. And then finally, I'm going to do the close up one, which is down here at the bottom. Great. Okay, so I have all three, I got to add it, make sure it's there. So now these three are attached. Okay, so I'm just going to go okay. And you'll see it says sewer. And when I double click this, um, the the properties folder should come up. Let me get it from here. For some reason, it's not coming up. There we go. One, two, three. Perfect. Okay, so that those three are done. And next, I'm going to do I can do the vehicle, but uh, the angle is kind of off. So I think what I'm going to do is go to plot uh, parking lot number eight and I can right click it here and I can get to the same look, same thing. Open up this planar view, this unwrapped view of the scan and go down here. Now, in this case, I think what I'm going to do is I'll just choose the center of the tire and I'm just going to go back up here. Annotation. I'm going to do the same thing. Click and I'm going to call this the uh, front driver tire. Now, I didn't leave any spaces here you could add uh, underscores but at the moment uh, it doesn't like spaces okay but i'll just put underscores and i'm going to call this uh, drivers front uh, tire and that's good and then i need to put in the hyperlinks again so go back here uh, this is the wide let's see well, that's this is be the wide down here so i'm going to open that one i'm going to add it i'm going to add the mid shot which is this one here i'm going to open that one and I'm going to add it and then I'm going to do the close up. So that's this one right here. And that should take care of that by adding one, two, three, all good. I'm going to click OK and this changed to the uh, front driver tire. So uh, the last one is going to be this sign. So let me look where this is. Let me bring it up here on my screen. OK, so I've got this line here. There's the sign right here. And there's this line here, so I need to look for that in the scan data. So I'm going to close the planar views here. And in the scan data, that sign looks to be, it's not this one, it's this one right here. So if I get close to this one, yeah, there's the line and that's the, uh, the sign there. So what I'm going to do is look at the closest scan. So if I look right across from that, there's a scan right here. That's number 10. So let's look at this in the planar view. And see what that gives us but um, this one looks like it's a little farther away but that's okay it's sort of the one that's most direct to the sign so um, again just uh, last set I'm gonna click on the annotation button up here click down here and I'll just call this parking sign parking sign that's fine and I'll just call it again uh, parking lot sign you can give it a description and same thing I'm gonna add the uh, the wide shot here added next one is the mid shot that's uh, this one here i'm going to go open add and then finally i'm going to do the close-up shot right here open and then go add and okay and that changes to parking sign so i've done three sets here but um, this is pretty much what you have to do when adding media now a couple of notes here about adding um video or photos or uh, reports or whatever. Um, it'll pre pretty much take almost anything, except you have to remember that this is going to be packaged into a folder. And when you run it on your machine, um, you know, if your machine understands what all the extensions are for the file. So if it's a JPEG image, then it knows it's an image file. If it's a MP4, it knows it's a video file and you have all the software to play this stuff. It shouldn't be a, a problem, but um, if you have some sort of a unique extension on a file and then you give it to somebody and they don't have the software to run it, well, that's going to be a problem. So if you're, you know, have some kind of a special CCTV file, it's a DMG file or something and your computer doesn't understand it or it thinks it's something else, it won't run, run properly um, in the uh, in the in the scene to go in the virtual tour file. So just keep that in mind um, when you're building this thing.
Now let's go to building the actual virtual tour. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on, on up on the apps button here up on the uh, top right and what it'll uh, do is uh, bring up a whole bunch of the uh, apps that are inside of Pharaoh scene and the one that I'm going to be looking for here is scene to go just a little note if it doesn't load or some of these things don't load or you don't have it you can always check and if you go to the apps button that's over here um, the, it'll bring up a list of apps and sometimes um, where it says active it may be unchecked and in case it's unchecked just activate it and then it'll just pop up here uh, when you close this little window okay so uh, I'm just gonna go here and I'm gonna go create scene to go data so I'm gonna click on that and it wants me to save no problem so I'm gonna say here uh, for this revision I'm gonna call it uh, added all images and then I'm just gonna click OK and then uh, let it do it let it do its thing and save okay great so you end up with this little window here uh, or this menu and you can adjust a number of things so for example uh, the like the background uh, of the uh, top-down view where you're gonna see sort of the map and all the scan positions it's white right now maybe I want to change it to black so if I just click on background color eh, maybe I'll make it a, a dark color and go okay that's cool um, there's some other things here that I, I won't really go through but there's things you can do like here where it says for example you know uh, a single layer map you can have a multi-layer map so if you have multiple floors or something and they're all sitting on top of each other it's gonna look kind of confusing so you can actually um, make certain levels visible or non visible but because we're outside and there's only one level here what I'm gonna do is just make sure all of these are checked so I can export uh, the high um, detail or high definition images um, the scan data in, high, in full res kind of thing and then also color and grayscale so you can blend between the color RGB data and the intensity data which is often referred to as, as grayscale but basically intensity data and this is super useful because sometimes you can see things in the intensity data that you can't see in color also in the project settings here um, I can change the name of this project I can call it uh, parking lot uh, virtual tour that would be okay and I can also change the image that's here so if I wanted to bring in uh, you know an image of the sewer or whatever I can really put just about anything here I can give it a description uh, parking lot project something like that uh, for virtual tour and then over here into keywords I can add that and here it says latitude and longitude now um, in this particular instance I had the GPS shut off and that's because I was doing some work inside and I, I just didn't bother turning it on outside but if you had it on you would actually get coordinates here but how do you get coordinates if for example you're scanning something inside but you still want to show it in Google Maps or something like that well there's a little trick you can do and let me show you that if you click on this over here it's gonna open up a window on the side here, and I'll just I'll just bring it over here um, but what you're gonna to want to do is put in uh, an address okay so I can put in my business address here and I'm just gonna go okay and this should pop up here okay so it's right there now if I zoom in onto the building we're actually in this area back here so if I click on the center here and I go what's here just do that you'll see that I get the coordinates that pop up at the bottom okay so I can actually copy this so I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna go control C to copy is the shortcut I'll move that out of the way and I'm, I'm gonna paste it in here uh, just to have it and this is this number here this first number is the longitude or the latitude excuse me and I'm gonna paste that in here and then I'm gonna copy this second part make sure you get that negative sign in there and I'm gonna paste that here as well so now if I click on this okay and I'll open up another window here this went automatically to the exact location okay so this will show up now in the virtual tour automatically so with everything pretty much set I'm just gonna click on export and I'm gonna let this crunch and uh, once it's done I'll come right back okay so it says that it has successfully created all the data that it needs for the scene to go virtual tour so I'm gonna click OK and the only thing that is left to do is to write this out so basically if you go back down on the app here and it says transfer scene to go data I'm gonna click on that so all we have to do here is if I go to the desktop and I make a new folder I may call this the parking lot virtual crime scene tour whatever something like that and click on that and I'm gonna hit okay 
and parking lot redact. That looks okay there. That's in there. And copy all linked files. So make sure that this is checked because what it's going to do is it's going to go and grab all of the photos and all of the media that you've um, appended or annotated and it's going to collect them all for you and then put them into a folder. So I'm going to go ahead and just transfer the data. Uh, this will not take too long. Shouldn't take very, very long. And this whole folder is something that you would transfer to, for example, a USB key, or you know, you can just have somebody copy it directly onto their on hard drive or something like that. So that that that's how it would work. So now it says open scene to go, whatever. I'm not going to do it from here. I'm actually going to show it to you from the uh, desktop and what I actually have here. So I'm going to go to the desktop. So um, parking lot, this one here, the virtual crime scene. I'm going to open this up. So these files here, if these were the only files that were on a USB key, okay, it, this would work, okay? Now, if you want, you can copy the whole folder that's up here, but you can also just uh, copy these files and uh, make sure nothing else is on there. Um, but if you copy or, excuse me, if you double click on Start Scene to Go on Windows, that will launch it on Windows. And if you do this one here, Start Scene to Go on Mac, then this will launch it on a Mac. So it's compatible with both. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. I'm going to do it on Windows here because that's what I have. And give it a second here. It will load up. Actually, it gives me, it may give you a little warning here to allow access. I'm going to do that. I'm going to say, yeah, go ahead and allow access. And you can see here that uh, the, uh, the map or this project is located on a map and it looks like it's uh, correctly uh, placed. It's, it's roughly in the right place there, which is great. I've got the uh, icon down here. Uh, for the project and basically I can just kind of open it or whatever and uh, get into this. So you'll see the background is black when I set it to black. That's what's there. I have all of the scan positions here and I also have uh, the labels that are here. So I've got the the parking lot, I've got the, the driver's tire and I've also got um, the sign that's over here. So from here, if I want, what I can do is I can actually jump into, uh, let's say, let's say scan number seven. I'm going to look at this in a panoramic view. So I'll, I'll look at it like this. Okay. And then I can kind of like rotate around like this. Um, now there's some different things that you can do here, but the first thing is here's the annotations right here. So if I click on this, and over here it says open link. Now I have three images, okay? So sometimes you may just do one, but you may do several things here. And if you have several things, you go down in this properties uh, icon down here. I'm gonna click on that and you'll see that I've got the three images here. So the first one should be the wide one. Uh, yeah, to the sewer, that's right. The second one should open up the mid. Yeah, and then finally the last one should be the close up, which seems to work just fine. Um, so, if I want to go back to panoramic view, I just click up there and there's different things you can do here. Um, actually, what I'll do is uh, if I want to go back to the overview map, I'll go back up here. I can open up the next one and uh, this is the tire. I'll just check this one over here, but basically same thing. Click, I'm going to go to the properties. Let's see if this one opens. So this is the vehicle farther away. This one should be the mid. Yeah, that looks good. And then this one here is the close up. Great. So you can see it's kind of like a complete documentation package that you can do some different things with. Now, um, I was messing with this before, so the color might be a little funny, but you can also measure distances. So let's say I go measure distance and I want to measure between some of these lines here. So if I click once, click twice, I get a line, I can go OK, and then it shows up. But let's say, for example, I wanted the path of something. So I wanted to measure, I don't know, somebody's walking path. I can click and just keep clicking like this and then click on OK. And what it does is gives me the individual segments plus the overall. So this one here is 20.115 meters, and that's the overall thing. Um, now there's other stuff that's here that you can work on. Uh, there is one more thing I would say down here in the bottom uh, left, if you click on here. Uh, the one that I typically use, it's kind of cool, is this toggle color mode. So if I click on this, you'll see that it goes to color. If I click on it again, Okay, it goes to gray. And if I click on it again, I now have uh, a way to go between both. Okay, so I can just kind of transition between the RGB and also the grayscale. So this can be really useful. It just depends on the application, but sometimes there's things you can see in the color that you can't see in the intensity data. Sometimes there's things in the intensity data that show up better than in color. So it's nice to have both as an option.
Um, there are different things up here, like with respect to layers and how close or how far you can show uh, some different things or some of the settings or some of the, you see if I put this to five meters, this, this, measure, this measurement disappears. So if it's getting really cluttered, you can take some of the annotations and some of the scan position and just reduce these down so you don't um, have a really, really sort of messy kind of uh, um, uh, tour here or whatever. You want to just kind of keep it clean and that's no problem. Um, there's other features in here, uh, but like I said, this is really nice because you get to very, very quickly, um, you know, just hand this to somebody on a USB key, package in all your photos and things like that, and makes for a, a pretty cool experience, I think. And so um, that's basically it. I think that's what I'm going to leave it as for now. Uh, a lot more you can explore, a lot more that you can do here, but those are the basics. Thanks everybody for watching and we'll see you next time on Click3D. Take care. Bye-bye.